Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Um, I've been busy trying to set up the new website. I've actually hired somebody to help me put it together. The um, project was more than I, I bit off more than I could chew, I guess you could say. I've built a lot of websites, but I was using a, a website creator, editor, that I no longer have access to, and uploading files to a website was just, uh, it was just too much for me. So I've been busy, forgive me, you know, working full time and trying to do Bible studies and build a website. It's its a lot of work. So I hired somebody to actually uh, help me put this together and hopefully we'll have it up and running soon. So there's your update. Now, this Bible study, well, it's not really a Bible study, but it's uh, on what's called the Apostles' Creed. And the word creed comes from the Latin word credo. It means... I believe. So basically creed means I believe. And people will try to tell you, oh well, you know, this was this is the Catholics. Well, not exactly people. You know, when the, uh, the Council of Nicaea came into existence, Rome was only one of many churches represented there. They weren't the the head church, contrary to what they tell you. And Latin is probably uh, the original origin of 20% of the English words of the English language. I mean, you know, 20% of the English language words come from Latin. That doesn't make us Catholic. So, as my statement of faith, I believe the Apostles' Creed and the Nice Creed of uh, the Nicaea, Nicene Creed, or from the Council of Nicaea, and the uh, King James. And Geneva Bibles. The uh, I believe the King James Bible is probably the best one in English. I've had people tell me it's full of errors. I they never can show me any, but I believe it from Genesis one one to Revelation twenty two. So let's take a look at that. So in Genesis one one we read, "In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth." And then in Revelation 22, in verses 20 and 21, we read, He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And so I read from the beginning of Genesis to the end of Revelation 22, and I believe everything in between. So, Let's read the Apostles' Creed. And I could defend every single word or every single thought from the King James Bible. One time I was at attending a Baptist church, you know, one of those dispensational Zionist pre trib rapture churches, when I actually thought that they cared about Bible truth. They don't. They only care about members. Um, I actually told the pastor, this is what I believed. And he says, oh, that's Catholic. You you shouldn't believe that. I'm like, I can defend every single, you know, thought from the Bible. And he made it sound like it's a heresy. So let's take a look. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father. Wow, that's a heresy, huh? According to the Baptist churches, right? I believe in God the Father, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. Of course he did. All the old, uh, just a quick note. Um, my note, 
Jesus had to go to hell. He didn't ascend into heaven till three days later. So where did he go? Um, <laughs> hmm, good question. Well, Jesus, remember when Jesus said, um, the Jews asked for a sign, and Jesus said, there will be no sign given unto you, but the sign of the prophet Jonas, for the Son of Man shall be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Well, pfft, yeah, Jesus went to hell. Where do you think all the Old Testament saints went to when they died? They went to hell. They were waiting for their Redeemer. So Christ went to hell, and he preached the gospel to them, and then took them to be with him and the Father. And I did an entire Bible study on that, if you're interested. So, you know, people will argue and say, oh, Jesus didn't go to hell. Well, where did he go for three days if he wasn't in heaven? You know? So, he... Um, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of, the, of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost. Could say spirit. You know, even the King James says uh, both. I believe in the Holy Ghost. I believe in an holy universal church. Some of the, um, when you read this, some, some of them will say Catholic, but the word Catholic just means universal. And just because the, uh, the fake Pope at Rome decided to take that word and, and name his church after it doesn't mean, doesn't change the meaning of the word, make it a bad word, you know. I mean, you got the Church of Satan. Does that mean church is evil? Well, <laughs> a lot of the churches are, but what can I tell you? Um, I believe in the Holy Ghost. I believe in on holy, universal church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So let's look at the Nicaea, Nicene Creed. This is a uh, basically a more detailed thing. Now, this is what they used to uh, tell, show people, and if people did could not, if people would not say that they believed in the, these creeds, they were not Christians. Okay? Period. I mean, like I told you, I could defend every single thought from the Bible in these creeds. Every single one. And if they didn't believe it, they weren't Christians. Okay, the Nicene Creed. It was not given to us by Rome. Rome might have been in attendance at the Council of Nicaea, but they had representatives from all the other churches, and there was not one church that was lord over all of them, contrary to the lying papists. Okay, so let's, let's read it. I believe in one God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made. That puts the nail in the Jehovah's Witnesses. They think that Jesus was a created being. He's Michael the Archangel. Wrong. God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father by whom all things were made. Who for us men and, our, and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven, sitting on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. Wow, the Baptist church guy, uh, he, he didn't like this. Gee, I wonder why, you know? All right, let's continue reading. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy 
Catholic and Apostolic Church. My note, not the Vatican. Catholic means universal. Okay. And I believe one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins and look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And when they're talking about baptism, they weren't talking about water. They were talking about Jesus said you must be born again. Jesus, uh, John the Baptist said you must be, uh, let's see, Jesus would baptize us with fire. Oh, yeah. All right, so that is the conclusion of the Apostles' Creed. And that is basically my statement of faith. One day I might just go through the Bible and show you the Bible verses that show every single thought in there as being true. So, all right, well, uh, just so you know what I've been up to, I've been pretty busy, and hopefully the website's going to be up and running soon. Um, I'm tired of the censorship of YouTube, and um, this website is from Iceland. And uh, Iceland, well, Greece had one day their banks closed. I think it was on a Friday. And then when the people, the banks reopened, like on, I think it was Tuesday, they found like 40% of all their money gone. The bank, the, the government basically closed it and says, oh, we taxed your money, we took it. That's theft, basically. Businesses couldn't pay their bills, you know, couldn't meet their payroll. Um, and you better believe the big money people had all their money gone. It was just the little people like us who lost their all their, you know, a big chunk of their money. It's called a haircut. They call it a bail-in, not a bail-out. Um, and Cyprus is an island nation in the Mediterranean. They had the same thing happen. Well, guess what, people? Iceland is a very small country, a uh, very small population, and the bankers wanted to do the same thing with Iceland. Well, Iceland, all the politicians said, you know what? I live next to all these people. Okay? These people are my neighbors. And if I steal all their money, they're going to hang me. So the politicians thought about it, and they said, you know what? If we do this for the bankers, we'll probably be killed by all our neighbors. So they thought about it, and they said, well, you know what? The bankers are committing fraud. Let's use our existing law laws, charge the bankers with fraud. Um, they arrested them, charged them with fraud, put them in jail, and uh, basically canceled all the debt. And, of course, when the bankers got out of jail, they were, you know, dual citizens, and they went to the Israeli state because they didn't want to stay in Iceland. So Iceland's basically, um, you know, they, they've got a big thing about freedom of speech. You know? Oh, you didn't hear about any of those uh, Cyprus or Greece or um, Iceland in the news, did you? Hmm. Well, another thing, too, is the, um, you've heard of the FDIC, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. Supposedly, they protect our deposits in the banks in case the bank... Uh, goes bankrupt, you know, goes under, belly up. Well, guess what? Congress changed the law, and Obama signed the bill, that if a bank goes bankrupt, goes belly up, and uh, believe me, they've been, you know, the banks have been buying all these fraudulent securities. Uh, what happens was, the government doesn't give you your money back anymore. No, what they do is they say you're, Money was a deposit in the bank. How do I, let me explain this, how this works. I was a business major in college. I understand how this works. I hope I can explain it to where those that don't understand um, will understand. Used to be if a bank went bankrupt, and let's say it had $100 million in deposits, but when the bank went bankrupt, it only had $50 million in assets, you know, it had a hundred million. It owes people a hundred million, but only has fifty million. Well, 
it would take the money and divide it between the people. And the people who had money in the banks as deposits, checking, savings accounts, they would normally get paid first. And then the stockholders of the banks would get paid last. After all, it was their business, it went bankrupt, so whatever was left over they would get. They would usually get pennies on a dollar. But the depositors, that's you and me people who put our paychecks in the bank, we would be the first ones to get paid. Well, the government changed the rule. What they did was, is they said, oh, well you're not a depositor anymore. If you've got $10,000 in the bank, what they're going to do is revalue the stock and give you $10,000 worth of this failed bank's stock. Which means you get pennies on the dollar. You're not going to get your $10,000 in the bank. You're going to get, uh, if you're lucky, maybe a few hundred dollars. So in other words, you're going to lose your rear end. So, and, and Congress did this, and Obama signed it in law, and I don't, don't, don't count on Trump changing anything. So, that's, that's my message. So, my message is, um, if you're smart, you'll keep some cash laying around, so that if the banks do crash, for whatever reason, um, and then there's that new, uh, there was some kind of a, like a virus, Trojan, thing going around where like the hospitals in England their computers froze up it was what they called ransomware and the people basically said you give us whatever X number of money or we don't give you your the use of your computer back well there were banks that um, lost control of their computers and had to pay suppose this happened nationwide you know all over the world or in the United States, you know, they could say, well, you know, it was the Iranians, it was North Koreans, it was the Russians, the olives of Russians. And, um, you know, bank closes, money gone, you get nothing. Welcome to the USSA. So, all right, everybody. Um, this is my uh, rant for the day. This is uh, May 5th, 14th. It's actually Mother's Day, I guess you'd say. You know, it's funny. Um, I was I did a study a number of years back. I don't really remember. But uh, all the holidays, like Labor Day and Groundhog Day and all that, they were all satanic holidays, believe it or not. You look on the satanic cal calendar, um, you know, like Anton LaVey, his real name was Levy. Yeah, nice Jewish boy. The founder of the Church of Satan was a nice Jewish boy. And I'm saying that sarcastically, by the way. Um, he had a satanic calendar. And it's funny that all these holidays, so-called, in the United States are um, satanic holidays. Now, I'm not saying Memorial Day and, and Thanksgiving. I, I'm talking about like Groundhog Day, Labor Day, um, probably Mother's Day, Father's Day, those kind of things. Um, I think May Day. I think May Day was a communist holiday. I, I you know, you, you could find it if you look for it on the internet. All right, well, this is Chaplain Bob Walker um, signing off. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Jesus, the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.